let my own manifest by Sunday let my answer enter my hand let my good news enter my hand there will be no carryover from this first quarter my first quarter location financial allocation mercy allocation good news allocation open your mouth and pray ask and it shall be given unto you open your mouth and pray let there be a manifestation let there be a manifestation I receive my evidence I receive my good news I receive my answer you don't even need to know what is coming just know that all things are working for your good it is a good thing that is coming no good thing will you withhold no good thing will you withhold somebody shout i receive so shall it be in jesus name give a lot a big big clap clap like you know it has already happened without seeing it i know it has happened help me walk to seven people and tell them you will hear my testimony on sunday and all those on the gallery you shouldn't be there so that the communion serving will not be difficult all those on the gallery you should not be there don't make it difficult for us to serve the communion said don't wait don't wait for anybody come and talk to you move all of you move to one side move to where the children are that extreme there all of you move there to that extreme You are a soul winner. Say we will not fail God. Say we will not disappoint God. Say loud amen. amen. Labor to retain saved souls. That's the topic of our focus today. Labor to do what? Retain saved souls. Labor to retain saved souls. John 15, 16. All of us will read it together. John 15, 16. Those of you coming on, you're welcome as you come in. Let the usher direct you so that you sit properly and orderly. The Lord bless you as you contribute to building his house in Jesus' name. John 15, 16. Everybody, loud and clear, want to go. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. Shout, I am chosen. Say, I am chosen. Continue. And ordained you. Shout, I am ordained anointed empowered so you see there you are chosen number two you are ordained ordained means anointed and empowered for a certain function you are chosen then you are ordained 
or anointed and empowered why are you chosen why are you ordained we're going to read it again and you will see why we have been chosen read from beginning please one to go you have not chosen me but i have chosen you and ordained you that uh -huh, you should go and bring forth fruit somebody say go and bring forth fruit so write down one go and bring forth fruit one go and bring forth fruit that is what god has ordained you for one go and bring forth fruit go and bring forth fruit what does that mean put it capital soul winning that's the meaning soul winning go and bring forth fruit don't sit in your house on friday don't sit in your house on, on sunday don't sit in your office table in your cubicle and be watching tv don't sit there and be watching phone get off from your office table and go into the next office go into the common room go you must go they are not where you are so go across the corridor to where they are you are you are ordained for that you are chosen for that number one go and bring forth fruit that the person was a sinner when you met him at the end it becomes a fruit harvest it becomes a fruit a soul that had been won hallelujah read up that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain so number two right fruits that must remain fruit that must remain fruit that must remain so you are chosen for two reasons number one you are chosen to go and bring forth fruit soul winning number two you are chosen to ensure that fruits brought in remain what is that follow up for soul establishment write it follow up to retain and establish souls follow up to retain souls follow up to retain souls that means follow up to establish the souls that have been won so you see the two things that define our calling in this mandate of evangelism what was number one read it loud from your book meaning what and number two louder and what does that refer to follow up to retain souls or to establish souls read now john 15 16 with that understanding loud and clear everybody read loud one to go full colon wait full colon now see the reward you will now know why many people in church can't get blessed see the reward the reward is only for those that will pursue this twofold labor not those who shout not those who cry not those who beg not those who jump and fall is those who will go and fulfill this twofold assignment and what will happen to them that whatsoever ye shall ask of the father in my name he may give it to you that went to bring forth fruit to you that labored so that the fruit will remain write this down all believers in christ have a twofold soul winning mandate all believers in christ doesn't matter your business doesn't matter your job doesn't matter your age it doesn't matter your, your where you live doesn't matter your financial status everybody has souls around your level rich men have rich sinners medical doctors have met so many sinners in their field those in business have many sinners in their field yes or no you have them everywhere you have in your family members are you aware that rahab only won her family members that is what put her name in the bible for effectively winning her family members to god effectively 
winning her family members to go. Something that Lot couldn't do. For winning just her family members, not others, just her family members. It immortalized her name in divine records. So even if it's just your family members, you go all out to win your younger brother, to win your younger sister, to win your little cousin, leave the senior ones, go after the young ones who respect you. Go after the young ones. All souls are souls, yes or no? All souls are souls. Go after the young ones who respect you. Influence them. When you tell them, follow me, they will come. Pay their transfer. Bring them. Start from there. Start from there. Start from there. Praise the Lord. Win your driver. Win your driver. Win your driver. My driver brought the sister, the fiancée that is to marry the sister. Another one. He said, you people must come and meet my papa to pray for you. You have to. We only met when he started driving me. But that's the level to which he has been influenced. And that's the level to which he has influenced his own family members. After they came, they said, from now on, anytime we are in New York, this is our church. Anytime we are in New York, this is the church we are attending. Praise the Lord. Influence people. Influence people. Bring them to God. Bring them to Jesus. That's our twofold mandate. That's our twofold mandate. Go and bring forth fruit, soul winning. And then ensure that the fruit that is brought does what? Remain. And God says, Watch me answer your prayers. Watch me grant anything you ask. Whether it's prosperity you need, whether it is healing you need. Whether it is marital settlement, he said, do this too for me and see me give you anything you will ask for. Anything you will ask for. Open check. Don't sit back and be reluctant to go out and bring fruit. And then after the fruits are brought, don't stop there. Don't just stop at, I brought somebody. Labor till they are retained. The fruit should remain. That's only when God says, I and you have a deal. If I can't see the souls you have won, remain. He says, we don't have a deal. We don't have a deal, I and you. You can cry till next year. It won't change anything. Therefore, we must ensure that what matters to God matters to us. So that what matters to us might matter to God. Because that's what matters to God. God is not sick. He doesn't need healing. God is not poor. He doesn't need money. God is not ignorant. He does not need you to teach him anything. God has only one concern. Man that he loves is on his way to hell. And he wants the man he loves to be saved. That is all. That is the only thing that bothers God's heart. From beginning till now, that's the only thing. The Bible calls it the travail of his soul. In Isaiah 53. That is the only thing that is in God's heart. How a sinner can be saved, that is all. And if that does not concern you, whatever concerns you does not concern God. It doesn't. It doesn't. So you must understand that this is our, our doorway to all blessings. Can I hear amen? Right, is that we are the laborers God is sending into his field to bring in the harvest of souls. We are the laborers God is sending. We are the laborers God is sending into his harvest to bring those souls. We are the laborers God is sending into his field to bring in the harvest of souls. Somebody shout, we must not fail. I didn't say grumble, I say shout, we must not fail. 
again. Again. Say, I will not fail. Say it again. Say it again. Look at this scripture. Matthew 9, 36 and 37. Matthew 9, 36 and 37. Look at it. Can we read together? But when he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion on them. Because they fainted. Can you see that's what, that is the only thing that bothers God. And were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Waiting for somebody to win them. Waiting for somebody to win them. Everybody 37 want to go. Then said he unto his disciples, the harvest truly is plenteous. But what happens? The laborers are few. So what should happen? Verse 38. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers. That he will send forth laborers. That he will send forth laborers into his harvest. Tell your neighbor, we are the laborers. God is sending into his field to bring in the harvest of souls. We must not fail. Hallelujah. John 4, 35 to 38. We must not fail. That prayer is not hanging in the ceiling. We are the laborers God is sending. We are the laborers God is sending. John 4, 35 to 38. Beautiful scripture. Look at it. John 4, 35. All the way to 38. Read it with me. One to go. Say not ye. There are yet four months. And then comet harvest tell your neighbor no delay we must not postpone we must not delay say not yet there are yet four months and then come and harvest so what should we do read on behold i say unto you lift up your eyes and look on the fields for they are white already to harvest lift up your eyes meaning put away everything that is distracting you business job children family money bills put them away if you breathe your last now all those things will cease to be important yes will cease to be important yes or no if you breathe your last now rent won't matter school fees won't matter the marriage list you have collected in your file will not matter people have died and left marriage list people have died on their way to traditional don't let anything distract you. In that bus on your way to traditional, on your way to about to buy things, preach, win souls. Let God see you carry soul winning everywhere you go. Don't say there is still time. Don't say later when I finish my wedding. While you are on the way, in that registry, preach to somebody there. As you are in the tricycle, Going to where you are to collect your suit, preach to somebody. Carry soul winning everywhere you are going. The field is white. The field is ripe. Verse 36. What does he say? He that repaired received wages. Who will God pay wages? Those, those who look or those who labor. Those who watch or those who labor. Please, we are all meeting here on Friday to, to go out and win souls. Is it those that will hear or those that will come? Please, as you get to your office, preach to the person in the next office. Is it those that will hear the announcement or those that will do it? He that repaired, received wages and gathered fruit unto life eternal. That both he that soweth and he that repeat may rejoice together. Shout, I will rejoice. 37, hearing is that saying true. One sow it and another repeat. What does that mean? That means the person you're about to preach to, God had made sure somebody preached to him in secondary school. That word has been walking on the ground. The person you're about to preach to, God made sure somebody preached to him when he went on holiday. That word has been walking on the ground. God is saying, if you fail, 
I will hold you responsible for the soul and for the labor of others who planted the seed, waiting for you to come and harvest it and you wasted their labor. I will hold you responsible. God says, both the sower and the reaper should rejoice in your concluding effort. All of them should rejoice in your concluding effort. Somebody say it again, we will not fail God. Hallelujah. Verse 38. I sent you. Oh my God. Has he sent you? Has God sent you? I sent you to reap that whereon you bestowed no labor. When I read this scripture, it was beautiful. God is simply saying, what you are to do now for souls to be won is nothing compared to what Mary Slazer did. Is nothing compared to what happened to David Livingstone, who was speared to death so that the gospel can come to Africa. God said, whatever you are doing now is nothing compared to what those who brought the church to Africa went through. Whatever you're doing now is nothing. He said, you, he said no more labor there. You are the privileged generation. You are not winning souls at a time when people like Apostle Paul were beheaded for preaching to win souls. When people like Peter were crucified upside down for preaching. But they still preached so that the baton of the gospel can be passed on. And it got to you. All you have to do is get up from your office, enter the next office. Beloved, you know Jesus loves you. If you die now, you're sure of heaven. That's all you have to do. And you refuse to do it. God said the blood of those saints will be required of you. The blood of all those people that were beheaded, that were fed to lions will be required from you. Because you are the reason why their labor failed. It's not costing you much. It's not costing you a job. You are not being imprisoned for it. I am sending you to reap a harvest where you bestow no labor, little or no labor. I sent you to reap that whereon ye bestowed no labor. Other men labored. And you are just entering into the harvest. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Lead your children, lead your children to Christ. Lead your children to Christ. Ensure they are genuinely born again. Lead your children till they have a hunger, a palpable hunger for God. Hunger for the house of God. Hunger for the things of God. Say here. Do you know when Father Abraham died? Do you know when Father Abraham died? Since. But when Lazarus got to heaven, Abraham by then should have been 7,000 years old or, or 8,000 years old or 10,000 years old. Now imagine Abraham 10,000 years old and Lazarus that is under 50. But when the rich man from hell looked at both of them there was no difference in their age there was no difference he knew this is abraham he knew this is lazarus but there was no remarkable difference in their age you know why when all of us appear before god sir there will be no young boy or old man there will be none age is a deception if you allow age to stop you from preaching the gospel, Satan has deceived you. Satan has successfully deceived you. Because when you stand before God to give account, you will not stand before God in your age. Nobody will be able to say, Lord, I was so old, I couldn't preach. Nobody will be able to say, I was so young, I couldn't preach. No. All of us will be about the age of Adam and Eve. About the age of Adam and Eve when they were created as adults. All of us. That's why there are no babies in heaven. There are no babies in heaven. There are no babies in heaven. In heaven, we are just souls. We are just souls. 
everybody old enough to be a part of that choir. There are no, there are no babies. There are no children. There are no youths. We are all about the same average age. Because in eternity, time doesn't count. Time doesn't count. In eternity, time doesn't count. You know why? Because there is nothing that defiles to corrupt that life. We grow old because defilements corrupt our life here. Our life here is subject to corruptions that wear and tear on us. But in that realm, there are no defilements to corrupt you. So you are as, you are as clean as the day you were created. Whether you have been there for thousands of years or you have been there for one year, there's no difference. So don't ever let any devil tell you, will I be able, will I be able, people in sick bed win souls. People in sick bed, they are so sick, they win the nurse that gives them injection. They preach to the doctor, they win souls. They preach to the cleaners. Somebody say amen. amen. Lift on and say, I will not fail God. I am a laborer, not a spectator. I am a laborer, not an observer. I will not fail God. Say amen as if you are a living person. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 9. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 9. The Bible says there, For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. We are laborers together. Amen? We are laborers together. We must therefore labor to get souls saved and continue to labor to see them retained and established in Christ. We must therefore labor to get souls saved and continue to labor to see them retained and established in Christ and in church. We must therefore labor to get souls saved and continue in that labor to see them retained and established in Christ and in church. That means we must ensure that they are number one, saved and brought in. Number one, they must be saved and brought in. John 10, 16. Don't get them saved and leave them out there. They must be saved and brought in. Saved and brought in. John 10, 16. What does the Bible say there? Other sheep I have, other than yourself. You are already my sheep, but there are still other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring. I must what? Bring. That they may hear my voice. If they don't hear what I am teaching, they will never be established. So they need to be brought into the house where the teaching is taking place, where the word is being taught, where the message that builds up is being preached. Them also I must bring and they shall hear my voice. And there shall be one fold and one shepherd. When you win them and leave them out there, they are not hearing the voice of the shepherd through his word that will make them get established. They are not hearing. And if they are not hearing, they cannot be retained. So they must be saved and brought in. They must be saved and what? Brought in. So when we say we must labor to get so saved and continue to labor to see them retained and established in Christ and in church, 
We are saying that we must labor until they are number one, what? Saved and brought in. Number two, until they are saved and added. Saved and added. There must not be any question as to where they belong. It must be clear to them, clear to us, clear to those who know them, clear to God, clear to Satan, that they have been added. They are to be saved and added. They cannot be guesswork over, so where do they belong? So where do they fellowship? I, I can't really tell. I'm not, no, no. They must be saved and added. Everybody stand up. Everybody stand up. Say neighbor. Where is your convert in this house? Right now. Where is he sitting? Do you understand what I'm saying now? There cannot be any guesswork. No, it must be clear that they have been added. Now, Ma, sorry. How many children do you have? You and your husband, how many children do you have? Three. Three. Beautiful. Now, imagine 10 years ago. Is it possible for you and your husband to go and sleep and you did not see and count those one, two, three children in the house? Is it possible? Yeah. Now, now could you, is it possible for you to go and sleep and they say, well, what of the number one? They went, I don't know. Maybe he chose to sleep somewhere else. Now, I can never imagine that. If a family is like that, what will you call that kind of family? What will you call the parents? Irresponsible parents. That's even if you go to police and report, they will say, where was your child last night? He said, I don't know. Did he come home? I'm not sure. Okay, what of the night before? I cannot really tell. He said, wait, Oga, are you sure you are the father of those children? So you, at your age like this, you can't tell whether your children came home. Hey, hey, hey. Inspector, come and follow me and hear what this man is saying. You are, you are a spectacle to behold. You are, you are a, a specimen to be analyzed. In the same way, God wants them to be so added that it is clear to Satan, to angels, to God, to us, to them, to those who know them, where they belong per time. Please sit down. That's what it means to be saved and added. Saved and what? Added. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. Thirty-seven to forty-one. Thirty-seven to forty-one. Acts two. Thirty-seven to forty-one. Read it as if you are the one talk preaching now. One to go. Where they preached. Read on. Were they interested in being saved? Read on. Were they told what to do to be saved? Read on. Was God at work in that labor? Read on. Did the preacher rest until they were genuinely saved? Read on. Did they receive the word? Did they receive the word? Was there joy of salvation? Was there joy of salvation? I'd like you to notice that up till now they have not been added. They have not been added. That is where many believers deceive themselves. They have not been added even though they are genuinely saved. They have not been added. They are too saved that there is joy of salvation. But they have not been added. They have not been added. The waster can still waste that harvest. And the labor shall be useless. All that money spent on that crusade, nonsense. Rubbish. The money should have been spent eating food. They've not been added. They are not hearing the voice of a shepherd yet. They are not hearing. Now let's read on. The same day they were added. I'd like you to notice that full colon. 
the same day they were added. Now, wow. I sat and I said, Holy Ghost, what happened between that full colon and the same day they were added? And Jesus, the Holy Ghost told me, he said, when Jesus used to preach to people, what did he used to say to them after preaching to them? And then, wham, light turned on. Follow me and I will make you. 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 So nobody gets added until somebody tells them they need to be added. They don't know. They don't know. They are not looking for where to go. They were on their own. You went to them to open their eyes to their eternal doom. And they saw their state. Wow, I need to repent. They don't know anything else. It is what you tell them that they will know. That is why Jesus never stopped at your sins are forgiven. No. It doesn't end there. Follow me and I will make you. That was what happened between that full color and the next thing we read. And the same day, in other words, later that day, after they were given basic briefings, they now took a decision to join and they were added. That is why I don't ever talk to people at the altar and not tell them, I am the pastor you have been looking for. You are the church members God has been looking for. God brought you here to add you. Make up your mind to remain planted here. Give me the chance to keep ministering God's word to you. And your life will change. I have now provided the Holy Spirit something to use and work on their heart even when they get home. I have provided information that the Holy Spirit can work on. That is the truth that will set them free from the error of thinking it's not important to be added. That truth that truth praise the Lord Hallelujah. I said praise the Lord Hallelujah. I said praise the Lord Hallelujah. the same day they were added unto them unto them 3,000 souls countable souls countable the people knew the apostles knew God knew Satan knew that they were added Hallelujah. That's the labor, sir. That's the labor. That's the labor. We are that laborer that must not feel God. Lift your hands, I will not feel God. Say it loud. Say in the name of Jesus. I receive grace to be a faithful laborer. I will not feel God. I am telling you, there are people this my elder here can reach that I cannot reach. I cannot reach them. They can watch my sermon on TV. He said, this man, this man preaches good. One day, one day, I will go to that church. But that one day, one day can continue for another 15 years. Another 20 years. Praise the Lord. But when this, my elder, meets him in a certain meeting place, he said, man, I'm going to church today. Eh, which church is that? He said, oh, Full Life Christian Center. My pastor is Reverend Tia Incha. I have heard that man preach. Ah, that man preaches well. Oh. Do you know what? I tell myself that one day, one day I will go to that church. Not one day. Follow me there on Sunday. Ah, it's just here now. Sunday is just tomorrow. Follow me there on Sunday. Follow me to church on Sunday. You know what? Be my special guest. Let me introduce you to my pastor on this Sunday. You mean it? This coming Sunday? This coming Sunday? I will meet the man. In real life, I'm coming. That was what the spirit quickened in his heart. Because the Holy Spirit knew that that is what will make that man come. The same way, the, thank you sir. The same way the spirit told Philip, join that chariot. Join that chariot. You see, because the spirit knows where labor has been invested. And the harvest is ripe. He wants to move you from where you waste labor with harvest that is not right to where harvest is right. He will then put in your mouth the right word. He said, I will give you a mouth and a wisdom that no man shall be able to resist nor against say. Somebody say it loud, amen. amen. 
Somebody say a loud amen. amen. Somebody say a loud amen. amen. Lift your hands. I will not fail God. Say it again. Say it again. Turn and ask your neighbor, who are you supposed to reach? And make sure they are saved and added. So, when the Bible says we are to labor and keep on laboring, it means we must labor until they are saved and brought in. Number two, until they are saved and added. Number three, until they are saved and discipled. Until they are what? Saved and discipled. Saved and discipled. Saved and discipled. Disciple means they are taught and taught and taught and taught and taught. Who is a disciple? A learner. Who is a disciple? A student. Who is a disciple? One that is being trained. A trainee. They are to be saved and discipled. Matthew 28, 19 and 20. Matthew 28, 19 and 20. What does it say? Matthew 28, 19 and 20. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. That one refers to the first preaching of salvation. So we can say, go ye therefore and preach to all nations. Continue. Baptizing them. Wait. Did they come and say, I want to be baptized? No. In the course of your preaching, the one day here of baptism, discipleship has started. They get baptized. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Next verse, loud. Teaching them to observe. Teaching, that's the process of discipleship. So teaching, 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 teaching. Teaching them to observe all things. How many things? How many things? He didn't say teaching them to write. He said what? What does that mean? Give us another version. That verse 20. 28, 20. Message Bible. Teaching instructs them in the practice. practice. So you instruct them till they practice. Till they what? Practice. Now how many of you know that there are things you are practicing now that you did not start practicing the week after you got born again. But as you continue to hear the word, you develop grace in a certain area. Acts 20 verse 34. I commend you to God and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up. As you kept hearing, as you kept hearing, you finally took quiet time serious. As you kept hearing, you finally took fasting serious. So they are to be saved and discipled. That means teach them today. Everybody goes home. They go home. You go home. They know they have been added. So the next day they are back. Yes or no? Yes. You teach again. You share the grace today. They go home. You go home. They know they have been added. Next week, they are back. Until people are added to the point where you can meet them again and again. They go through foundation class again and again. They go through discipleship class again and again. They become workers again and again. They function in that department. It, that is what it takes to disciple people. That is, a, that is what it means for a soul to be retained. For a soul to be retained. So the, the chorister should ask himself, who in this choir is the soul I brought to Jesus? The usher should ask himself, amongst all these ushers, who amongst all of them is the soul I brought to Jesus? That is, I brought to him, he came. He remained until he finished foundation class. He remained until he joined workers meeting. He remained until they sent him to be an usher like myself. Who? Which soul? Which of these souls? Which of these souls? That is the labor of retaining saved souls. That's the labor. If we go through your call log now, how many people in your contact are the souls that you are planting. That you say, this one, I need to call this one to find out whether he has prayed today. I need to call this one to know how he's doing in case he needs encouragement. Woohoo! In your contact list. Who in your contact list is a soul that you are helping to get established? It's only money and money and money. That's all you are worshipping, mammon. But the reason for this month's teaching 
is so that God will balance our lives. Can I hear amen? Not to condemn us, but to balance us. To balance us. Look at the hours you invested to have your BSc. Calculate the hours. Look at the hours you invested to have your MSc, your MA. Look at the hours you invested to have that online course, three months. Three months, sometimes you sit down for 12 hours. You have a deadline to submit a certain assignment. Look at the hours. For something that will perish. What or for something that will affect you in eternity? How many hours have you invested in 24 hours? How many hours? He said, right now, I am doing a course, I'm doing a course on event management. You, you know, we cannot depend only on one source of income. <laughs> event management. Good. Very good. Because you know the little that that extra capacity will add to you. Do you know what soul winning will add to you? The God that cannot lie says, anything you will ask me, I will put you in the category of people I cannot say no to. You will belong to the class of people I can't say no to. That is why Daniel did not need BSc. Daniel didn't have MA. Heaven descended and blew into their brain. Ten times better. And you know what Daniel said at the end? They that be wise shall shine as stars that turn many to righteousness. That was, that was their secret. Turning many to righteousness. You know what Joseph said to Potiphar's wife? How can I commit this wickedness and sin against my God? Sir, he didn't attend any school, but he taught senators wisdom. I am telling you that you can have your BSc, your MA, your DD, and at the end, you can't build a house. At the end, you can't have good health. But the blessing of the Lord, it make it rich and added what? No sorrow with it. It is time for us to give ourselves to soul winning and following up of souls. We must give ourselves to it passionately. 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 Oh, this is a person in my office that I preach to. I'm making sure he goes through foundation class. I'm making sure. I'm making sure. Ah, see the number of people Papa is teaching. In Dominican Canada, when we're going to Dominican Canada, we're so many, we're so many. That is you that heaven is condemning. It's your soul that should be sitting there. It is the soul you are to bring to church that should be sitting there. That empty seat is reporting you to heaven. They give you a newcomer's form. You throw it away. They say, get down the name and the phone number. Call the person. Remind the person to come to church. You discard it. You threw away your crown. You threw away the answer to your marital settlement. And you are crying every day at the altar, wasting God's time and wasting your time. You threw away your baby boy. And you are saying, God is the one delaying you. No, you are the one delaying yourself, not God. You threw away your first car. No wonder you are still trekking to today. Listen. There are things you do for God. God will give you what you are not qualified for, like making David king. Made David king. He, he was 17 years old. He didn't deserve it. God said, I don't care. He's a man after my heart. What concerns me concerns this man. Make him king. Whoever doesn't like it, I wipe them out. Angel opened prison and said, they locked you guys up. Go and preach. Let them try it again. Go and preach. Tell them the words of this life. God is committed to soul winners. God is dedicated to soul winners. God is passionate about soul winners. And when you become passionate about it, and guess what? You don't need to go and preach to people of a strange language. 
Those your customers that enter your shop every day. Those your friends in the neighborhood. Those people living in the same compound with you. You don't need to go and learn somebody's language. Or come and say, excuse me, yes, why are you? I don't know you. Right now, once you tell somebody, hello, God bless you. Yes, can I help you? I'd just like to share with you the word of God. Uh, I won't take much of your time. Okay. Because other people labored. We didn't come at a time when they were sacrificing firstborns to family altars. That's not when we came. We didn't come at the time when they were sacrificed out of seven wives. They sacrificed the seventh one with the baby in the womb. And the whole village must go to the shrine every, every seventh month for the whole month. The village soldiers are there. If anybody come to preach another God, they sacrifice you to the altar and others are shouting and celebrating. That's not the time we came. We came at a time when the light has shined in darkness. Even those who don't go to church, inside their heart, they know they need to repent. That's when we came. That's when we came. Somebody say, we will not fail God. Say it again. Oh, say it louder. Lift on and say in the name of Jesus, I receive grace not to fail God. We must get them saved and brought in. Somebody say saved and brought in. Somebody say saved and added. Somebody say saved and discipled. And the next one, they must be saved and fruitful. They must be what? Without which we have not done it. They must be saved and fruitful. John chapter 15, verse 2, verse 5, verse 8. John 15, verse 2, verse 5, verse 8. John 15, verse 2, verse 5, verse 8. Verse 2, verse 5, verse 8. Everybody, let's read verse 2 together. Every branch in me. How many branches? How many branches? Some branches. A few branches. Branches with title. Branches with post. How many branches? How many? Does that include you? Does that include pastor? Does that include deacon? Does that include elder? Does that include a, a Sunday school teacher? Yes. Somebody say every branch. every branch. Read now. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit. What will he do? He taketh away. Continue. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it that it may bring forth more fruit. Every branch that does what? Beareth fruit. Beareth fruit. He will purge it so that it can bring forth what? More fruit. So the first level is fruit. What's the second level? More fruit. More fruit. Meaning none of us is supposed to be on the same level of fruitfulness. We should start all learn and we are bringing fruit. Then he walks on us some more. We hear more word and we begin to bear more fruit. Next verse. Verse 5. Read loud and clear. I am the vine. You are branches. He that abided in me and I in him. The same bringeth forth much fruit. What was the first level? Second level. And which one are we seeing here now? Much fruit. So there is fruit. There is more fruit. There is much fruit. There is fruit. There is more fruit. There is what? Why are you folding hands? You are not writing what I'm teaching. Hear me. So I'm wasting my time. Oh. Should I give you the mic to tell the child why you are not writing? Somebody say fruit, fruit. More, fruit, more fruit, much fruit. Wow. For without me, you can do nothing. And finally, verse what? Verse 8. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit. So what was the first level? Fruit. Second level? More fruit. Third level? More fruit. 
Now look at verse 16 for the best level, greatest level, highest level. Verse 16. Verse 16. Verse 16. Verse 16. Verse 16. What was the first level again now? Truth. Second level? More truth. Third level? More truth. Now look at this verse 16. What is the ultimate level? Fruit that remain. Fruit that what? Remain. Until you have fruit that remain, you don't have fruit. You are wasting your time. You are deceiving yourself. Until you have fruit, you can point to say, by the grace of God, I help this young man. Today, he is one of the workers in church. By the grace of God, look at this lady. She came as one of those working under me. Started, came to be trained. But today, she's not just trained. She's also standing. One of those serving Jesus. So your business becomes a doorway for souls. So when you pray, say, Lord, you know this business is a soul winning platform. Lord, that contract is needed to take this business to the next level. God say, who? Clear everybody and give it to him. Clear everybody. He cannot be told no. Clear everybody and give it to him. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Fruit that remain. They must be saved and fruitful. Not just saved. Saved and fruitful. Hallelujah. Saved and fruitful. Saved and fruitful. Not only should the person become a member, the person too should have souls he has won. The person should also have what? Souls he or she has won. Say a loud amen. Look at Colossians 2, 6 and 7. Colossians 2, 6 and 7. Colossians 2, 6 and 7. Immortal. Colossians 2, 6 and 7. As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. Rooted, built up, established in the faith. As you have been taught, abounding therein. Rooted, built up in him, established in the faith. Rooted, built up, established in the faith. Because you came into the house and you were hearing the voice of the shepherd teaching you. You were not left out there. You were brought in. Say loud amen. amen. Now, many people used to ask, so what do I do? So, so what do I do? Okay, great. Okay, they told me, okay, follow up this person. What do I do? What do I say? Hey, Jesus. Hey, tell them. Tell them about how your own salvation got established. My dear, honestly, I cannot pinpoint. I cannot pinpoint the things that got my own salvation. <laughs> hey, this is not easy. Oh. Let me help you. Let me help. Praise the Lord. Tools for retaining souls. Number one, instruct them to continue. That's number one. Instruct them to continue. Instruct them to do what? Continue. You are not talking, you are just writing. You think you are in a, you think you are in a classroom. You are in a spiritual laboratory to be inoculated. Don't let me put injection in your bone. <laughs> Am I talking to somebody here? What is number one? Instruct them to continue. It doesn't stop here. It doesn't stop here. You can't stop like this. No. Instruct them to what? Continue. Acts 2.42 And they continued steadfastly. They continued how? Steadfastly. You must tell them to continue. They continued steadfastly. They must be told. We call the five cardinal points. Gather in worship. Grow in the world. Gear for work. Going as witnesses. Continue here yeah, refers to the first two. Gather in worship. Grow in the word. Gather and 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 worship. Grow in the word. Until they continue through all the five. 
he instruct them to do what? Continue. John 8, 31. If you read this passage, may God bless you. John 8, 31. Read it. One, two, go. Then said Jesus to the Jews, we believe on him. Who did he say it to? No, no, no. How can you say who did he say so to the Jews? God forbid. God forbid. He did not say to the Jews. Who did he say to? To the believers. No, not to the believers. Who did he say it to? To the Jews that believe. To the Jews that believe. Those are two different things. To the Jews that believe. That's not the same as to the Jews. That's not the same as to the believers. To the Jews that believe tells you a particular kind of believers. New converts. A moment ago they were Jews. Next moment they are now believed. That's the kind of, those are, those are the Jews he's talking about. He spoke to the Jews which believe on him. Which believe, meaning this is men no. For immediate new converts, this is what? Men no, men no, men no. This is breakfast, lunch, dinner. This is what you tell new converts. You lift this verse like this and drop it. Boom. And what does he say? If you continue in my word. Then are you my disciples indeed. When he says disciples indeed, what does he mean? Answer me now. Answer me now. If not, if not, I am teaching the wrong church. When he says my disciples indeed, what does he mean? Hey, 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 hey. Bring your head out of, out of religion. Think, think simple communication. Then are you my disciples indeed? What is he trying to say? Huh? Let me go to where people then are ye my disciples indeed for real meaning you can still be fake disciples meaning there are many fake disciples get me another shoe <laughs> there are many what fake disciples leave it later there are many what fake disciples many what fake disciples for you to become a real do you know the number of people that say I'm born again I'm born again but they live like Satan they know the date but their life has not changed. They know the date. They can tell you the time. They know the date. But their lives have not changed. Go and check. Give me another shoe, quick. Their life has not what? Changed. Why? Because, do you know the number of people that go around parading to be graduates, but they dropped out in third year? They can tell you about, ah, uh, I know Malabo now, Hall 4. <laughs> hall 4, Hall 4, Hall 5. Hall 4, Hall 5. Hall 4 is this way like this. Then Hall 5 is this other way. Then Hall 6 is down there. Hey, and then in the female hostel, Hall 7, Hall 8. Hey! Malabo, Malabo. Nalai, he dropped out in year 2. The 2 years is enough for you to have familiar knowledge. That is what happens when a person has been led to Christ, but has not been brought in, was not added, was not planted. He has enough information to remember, okay, there was a day I gave my life to Christ, but my life has not changed. So Jesus says, you are not a true disciple. You are a fake. You are a fake. He said, it is only those who continue in my word that now hear enough word to build them up and change them to where they now become disciples indeed we must tell every new convert this truth we must we must mama can i tell you something and everybody please hear me and believe me oh how can there be so many churches and yet sin is everywhere. How can there be so many churches? Men of God, men of God everywhere. Can I tell you something? It has always been like that. It has always been like that. It has always been like that. Including when Jesus was here. Including when John the Baptist was here. The same people that ate his bread and fish are the ones that say crucify him. The battle of light and darkness has never ended. There is no resting moment. Let's stop deceiving ourselves and thinking there's something. Oh, no, 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 no. Let all of us get up and labor. Let's stop complaining. Let's get up and do what? 
labor. The only reason why it is more pronounced now is because there are eight and a half billion people in the world. As against that time. Population has exploded. Population has what? And because of technology, news travels far. News does what? News does what? Travels far. Travels far. Travels wide. News travels far. Because of technology, news travels far. Travels wide. I'm telling you, the difference is a generation that is awake and a generation that is asleep. Finish. When you hear Peter say, we will give ourselves continually. That is why the voice of God in their generation was so loud. That is why what? Was so loud, so loud, so loud. So loud. So loud. That's 120 people enter the room, lock themselves up and prayed until 3,000 got saved. Don't we have 120 people? Don't we have 120 people? But they are not ready to stay in a room and pray. They are not ready to stay and pray. I won't knock an open shop. Somebody must go for somebody's traditional marriage. You will see on Monday now. Monday. We are coming for it. Eight hours with Jesus. That's where you see the demon that controls believers. We meet on Monday. People love other things more than God. Somebody say, Father, I will not fail you. They love other things more than God. They love other things more than God. Okay, explain to me why somebody's birthday should be compared with Jesus and an appointment with Jesus. Somebody's child dedication. Are you the baby to be dedicated? Why should anybody's child dedication tamper with your stewardship? Are you the one they want to dedicate? Even the baby to be dedicated came at the end of the service. I thought, walk it here. The baby to be dedicated came at the end. You went and sat there because you are a worshiper of man. You prefer that your friend say, oh, for honoring me, thank you very much. Wow, I'm proud of you. And God say, I'm sad at you. And please, what time is the service? Is it the service? So, 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 so. No, 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 I will not be there. I have to be in my first service before I come. I must, I must report at my duty post before I come. So expect me there around 11. Ah, 11. By then they have dedicated the baby. Who are you? Are you the priest? Are you the priest? Don't we all go to churches? Now you be the priest. Now me the baby where you want to dedicate. I'm only there by 11. Why? Am I the baby? be true and let every man be a liar we are not worshippers of men we are worshippers of God that's the seriousness with which we must tell souls to continue to do what to continue 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 it's a serious thing continue it's a serious thing continue continue one day I saw mama here trying to tell tell counselors Direct them to foundation class now. Direct them to foundation class now. And the counselors were looking at mama and looking at the souls. Looking at mama and looking at the newcomer. They didn't have the confidence. They didn't have the guts. Oh, human worship. They didn't have the nerve to say, God bless you. I'm so glad you're giving your life to Jesus. Listen, there's an impartation you must receive now that will secure you before you get home. Listen. In many of our houses, there are battles waiting for us. But let this fire cover you. Carry this fire to your father's house. Listen, 30 minutes. 30 minutes of that class will change your life. When I attended that class, the fire that entered me. Come, come, let's go. I will lead you there. Just 30 minutes of your time. They didn't have the guts. Is that the person that they say, they say, if you don't deny Christ, I shoot you. You will deny Christ in capital letters. That is why we must prepare our heart. We must do what? We must tell ourselves enough is enough. Enough is enough. We have to take seriously this message. Our heart must be prepared. 
Because even when you want to tell somebody Jesus loves you, the look on their face might almost defeat you. Unless you know that you came with grace. Beloved, I won't take much of your time. And who knows? You don't know what God wants to deliver you from in the next five minutes. As you just give these five minutes to honor God. You, you are weak. You melt him. Eh, bro, continue. Who wants to die? Bro, continue. He will put the right words in your mouth. Aye. Beloved, do you know that nobody in his sane mind, sane mind, will go and do Yahoo rituals? Nobody. Nobody in his sane mind will go and sleep with a madman or a mad woman. Nobody. But there's a level to which somebody with audacity whine you. And you are listening. Nah, beggar, no go for Come on, so that. Look at me, look at me, look at me. Do you want to have mad money? Mad money. That's what the Bible says, be not deceived. Though. Evil communication. Don't say I am strong. Though. If you listen to the wrong voice, believe me, I am I'm robbery. If you listen to the... See, that is the audacity with which we should preach the gospel. That is the authority. We are the ones that have backing. They don't have backing. I walk with God the Father, walk with God the Son, walk with God the Spirit, three of them in one. We are the ones that have backing. We shouldn't be afraid of telling people what will help their soul. Say here. here. Say here. here. If you continue, if you continue, Sunday, Sunday Christian won't help you. Sunday, Sunday religion won't help you. You must continue. Lift your hand and say, Father, I receive the grace to reach souls and bring them in. Number two, get them baptized with water. Get them what? That's water. That open action is so important. Get them baptized. Don't say I don't know what to tell them. I'm telling you what to tell them now. Get them baptized. Bros, you need to be baptized. Ah. Really? Yes, so. Why? Because God said so. Don't you want to obey God? I want. Uh -huh. If you see God, will you challenge him and say, why should you say I should be baptized? No. Uh -huh. Listen, so many people have gotten their miracles during baptism. How? Like Jesus Christ. When we're not being baptized. Heaven open. And the Holy Ghost descended. You do you know the door God wants to open for you. Obedience is better than sacrifice. He said, okay, uh, no, I'll be baptized. I'll be baptized. I will obey God. That is all. Get them baptized in water. Get them baptized in water. There are people here who have spent their life convincing themselves that they shouldn't obey God in baptism. As if they know more than God. As if they are wiser than God. So even from the beginning, the foundation of their salvation is established in stubbornness and rebellion. They pick and choose what to obey and what not to obey. I am too big to enter water. How can I enter water? And people will see me getting baptized. Exactly. That was the real idea. You must die to yourself and let only Christ be glorified in you. If Christ be lifted up, what will happen? He will now lift you. So people get born again, but there is no change of level. Because they are born again has selective obedience. Selective obedience. The Lord told me, he said, at the time he commanded baptism, it was at a time where only those with a genuine experience can bear the risk of open announcement of their salvation. Because salvation was on the inside. Nobody saw openly. And if people saw, they will report you. If people saw, you can be jailed. If people saw, the Pharisees can stone you. So anybody that will dare to openly say, baptize me. That's, he, he is born again to the marrow. He is ready to die now. That is why the, the baptism experience was so powerful. Can I hear Amen. Tell your neighbor, are you baptized in water? Matthew 28, 19. Matthew 28, 19. Go ye 
into all the world. Teach all nations. Baptizing them. How many are you to teach? All. How many are you to baptize? All. Why are you not baptized? 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 Matthew 16, 15, 16. Matthew 16, 15, 16. Put it on the screen quickly, please. Matthew 16. 15, Mark, Mark 16, thank you. Mark 16, 15, 16, thank you. Mark 16. He said to them, go ye into all the world. How many of the world? And preach the gospel to how many creatures? How many of the world? How many creatures? Verse 16. He that believeth and is baptized. How many should believe? How many ought to believe? So how many ought to be baptized? I'm telling you, obedience is what moves God. Not religion. There is only what you like that you obey. You don't ever obey God completely. That's why your tongue has no power. It's partial obedience. But as God shows you areas where you missed it, correct it quickly and fall into that category of people that God will never say no to. Somebody say amen. amen. Acts 2 verse 38. Acts 2 38. Everybody read this one with me. Acts 2 38. One to go. Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized. Every one of you. Again. Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized. Every one of you. Again. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized. How many of them? How many of them? How many? How many? How many? I'd like you to notice that the first thing is repent. Before what? Baptized. But I was baptized. I was baptized many, many years ago. Many, many years ago as a child. I too was baptized as a child. Did I repent as a child? Capital no. And you remember they baptized. Then I did confirmation as a teenager. Was I, did I repent? Man, no. And you went and said, I'm not. I'm not. confirmation. Praise the Lord. You see, you don't get baptized, then later oh, you repent. You are disobeying the word of God. What is the order in the Bible? Repent. And be baptized. So any baptism you did before your repentance, you were having a bath. You were bathing in the open river or open stream or wherever. You were bathing. You weren't baptized. Baptism is after the repentance that happens on the inside. So you need to be baptized. I've seen people delivered as they were getting baptized. I've seen addictions break as people are getting baptized. I've seen demons cast out as people are getting baptized. I've seen healings take place. You see, there's nothing that clears the way for blessings like obedience. Like what? Obedience. 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 It's so important. Get them baptized in water. Get them baptized in water. Emphasize it. The centurion said, I mean, the, the Ethiopian eunuch said, he said, this is water. What stops me from being baptized? Philip said, if you truly believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as your Lord and Savior, you can. He said, I believe. Philip said, then you can be baptized. He said, chariot, stop. <laughs> the chariot stopped. They came down. There was no plan. He didn't carry baptism cloth. He said, how can I get baptized? I didn't carry baptism cloth. Guy, my God, my God, my gosh, my gosh, my gosh. Ethiopian eunuch, minister of finance of the whole empire, a public figure, surrounded by his servants. But if any man be in Christ, all that does not matter. He entered a dirty water. They soaked him. He came out, praise the Lord. As he turned, Philip had gone with Philippian Airlines. I am telling you, miracles that God performed during baptism are many. 
miracles. Both the person baptizing and the person being baptized. Miracles. Because God is always excited when people obey him recklessly. When people obey him recklessly, it gets God excited. Say loud amen. amen. Come on now, say loud amen. amen. I'm not hearing you say loud amen. amen. How many of you are going to rise up and labor for God? Say loud amen. amen. Number three. What did I say was number one? Instruct them to continue. Number two, get them baptized with water. Number three, absorb them into fellowship. Absorb them into fellowship. It's so important. They must be absorbed into fellowship. They must be absorbed into fellowship. Acts 2.44. Acts 9.19. Acts 2.44. Acts 9.19. 2.44 says, all that believe were together, were together and had all things common. Acts 9.19. Acts 9.19, when he had received meat, he was strengthened. Then Saul was with them, the disciples, certain days at Damascus. Look at verse 26 of Acts 9, verse 26, and keep reading to 28. When Saul was come to Jerusalem, he tried to join himself to the disciples. Because you don't get saved and you are left outside, you must be absorbed into fellowship. He tried to join himself to the disciples, but they were afraid of him. And they didn't believe he was a disciple. 27. But Barnabas took him. Somebody say Barnabas took him. And brought him to the apostles. And declared unto them how he had seen the Lord in the way. And that he had spoken to him. And now he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. 28. And he was with them. Coming in and going out at Jerusalem. Can you see the importance of absorbing them into fellowship immediately? Absorb them immediately. Nobody is a superstar. Do you know that this Saul almost backslid? Do you know? Acts chapter 11. Acts chapter 11. 22 to 26. Now look at me. Look at me. Acts 11, 22, 26. Look at me. You, do, do you know the story of, of, of Saul? Before he became Paul. Hey, hey, look at me. Now what was Saul in the Jewish community? Star lawyer. When you say lawyer, you are, you are, you are, you are unfair to his pedigree. Paul was a star lawyer. He was what? best of the best prosecuting all their cases he was their chief prosecutor he was the one that put all the saints in prison he would win any case and lock all of them up he was the one prosecuted all of them successfully it's according to the law perfect sanhedrin of sanhedrin pharisee of pharisees yes star man star so when he repented and gave his life to christ he said, Lord, what must I do? He said, go into the city. He shall be told you what that must do. So he went into the city. They prayed for him. His eyes opened. Gave his life to Christ. Received the Holy Ghost and fire. He started preaching on the spot. But because he knows everything about what they do. And he now has knowledge of the scripture. He defeated all of them in preaching. He will use all their secrets and preach to them. He will use all their practices and preach Christ. So he was winning so many of their souls anyhow. They said, we, the only way is to kill this guy. So the disciples, when they heard that they want to kill him, they said, no way. This guy is too valuable. They carried him, put him in a basket, lowered him outside the city, and sent him to where? Jerusalem. So when he came to Jerusalem, now, the news of his bad, bad boyness is everywhere. But the news of his repentance has not yet reached there. So when they saw him, like they hey, we are finished. <laughs> So everybody ran away. They locked him out. He said, no, I'm one of you. One of who? You. <laughs> Until An Ananias came. Or is it Barnabas now? Came and took him. And testified to them of his salvation. But then no long after that too, they wanted to kill him here. Because everywhere he preaches, Jews will be repenting anyhow. Anyhow. So they wanted to kill him again. Now the believers in Jerusalem, they said, where are you from? He told them, Tassos. They said, go to your, go home and hide. Do you understand what I'm saying? But the problem in Tassos is that there are no believers. There are no what? There's no gathering of believers. Don't say, I, I, I am a star. I'm a champion. If you know the way I went deep in occultism. Now, listen, you, anybody can backslide without the fellowship of the brethren. Anybody can backslide. So that same Panabas, hello, Hello, with other concerned brethren. 
when they heard that he went to Tarsus, now some other people brought the gospel to Tarsus. So they sent Barnabas and some others to go from place to place, encouraging the brethren that were now repented. So when he came to Tarsus, he remembered this is Paul's, Saul's town. Where is Saul? Nobody could account for him. Nobody could account for him. Where is his hometown? So he went to his village and finally found this guy. Halfway between backsliding. Found him. And brought him to Antioch. When he found him, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year, what happened? They assembled. Tell your neighbor, absorb them into fellowship. Tell them it is a must. Lest they backslide. Do you know that when we come to church, it's not our fellow businessmen we should be looking out for. It is not our fellow executives. It should be the new convert we saw at the altar last week. Last two weeks. Where is he? Who was to follow him up? What happened? Why is he not here? Where is that person? Because that's what we should be doing. No, excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. I wanted to see you. Yes, sir. Please, sir. I wanted to see you. Please, sir. And uh, somebody told me that you are you walking. So, what is your problem? What is it? What is it? Can't you see that the arm of flesh will fail you? Don't you know the Bible say, Woe to them that put their trust in man and make a flesh their arm? Now, after you have reached out to a soul, you can now do other things. God is not against your business advancement. But God says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. First the kingdom of God. And his righteousness. And his righteousness. Seek ye first. So what did he say we must do? Number one, instruct them to continue. Number two, get them baptized with water. Number three, Come, put three there. Why didn't you put three? Number three is what? Absorb them into fellowship. Number four, get them baptized in the Holy Ghost. Get them baptized in the Holy Ghost. That is number four. Get them baptized in the Holy Ghost. You need to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. How do I do that? Pray and ask the Holy Spirit to baptize you. Read Acts chapter 2 from verse 1 to verse 4. Read Acts chapter 2, 1 to 4. You need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. How will I? Let's pray. Jesus said when we pray, he will baptize us. Let us pray about it. Read this book, Reality of the Holy Spirit. Read it, just read it. It will give you more knowledge. Get them baptized. Get them baptized. In Acts chapter 8, 14 to 17, Philip went and preached in Samaria. The moment the brethren knew, the apostles knew, that people have repented in Samaria, they sent Peter and John to go and minister to them so that they are baptized in the Holy Ghost. Acts 8, 14 to 17. Acts chapter 9, when Saul gave his life to Christ, immediately Jesus appeared to a disciple and said, go and lay hands on him so he will receive the Holy Spirit. Acts 9, 11 to 17. Go and lay hands on him. Let him receive the Holy Spirit. It's so important. Go and lay hands on him. Let him receive the Holy Spirit. When Cornelius began to fast and pray and see God, fast and pray and see God, God knew that the way this man is going, he is getting more rooted and rooted and rooted. If we don't show him the right way, he will miss his way. So what happened? The Lord appeared to him and said, send to Peter. He will speak words to you. He will speak words to you. Cornelius gathered all the people in his house under his influence. And when Peter came, he said, we are here. The Lord said, you speak to us. Speak. We are ready to hear the words. And Peter began to speak to them about Jesus about the Holy Ghost, about Jesus, about the Holy Ghost, about Jesus. And while Peter was speaking, a double miracle took place. At the same instant, their salvation was confirmed and they were baptized in the Holy Ghost. While Peter yet spake, the Holy Ghost fell upon them and they were baptized with the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10. I am telling you it's so important. Acts 10, 43 to 48. Acts 10, 43 to 48. It's so important. It's so important. You must be baptized. Tell them about the Holy Ghost baptism. In Acts 19, from verse 1 to verse 6, Paul saw some believers in Ephesus. 
So he asked him, have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? Give me verse 2. Everybody, let's read verse 2. One, two, go. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him, we have not so much as heard. What did they say to him? We have not so much as heard. What did they say to him? Write this down. If people hear about the Holy Spirit, they can easily receive the Holy Spirit. When people hear the word on the Holy Spirit, they can easily receive the Holy Spirit. When people hear the word, that's why they need to read the book, Reality of the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit. Get them baptized. Get them baptized. Get them baptized in the Holy Spirit. Next. Teach them the principles of God's word. Teach them the principles of God's word. Teach them the principles of God's word. Teaching them to observe all things. Matthew 28, 20. Teaching them to, if you want them to remain planted, teach them. They need to start attending Bible study. They need to start going through foundation class. They need to start workers meeting. Get them to be taught. Let them sit on that teaching. Let them sit on, that's why you as an old Christian, you cannot be playing with the teaching of the word. You as an old believer cannot be playing with the teaching of the word. You can't be playing with the teaching of the word. Acts 2.42 They continued in the apostles' doctrine. John 8.32 You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. First Peter 2.2 2, Desire the sincere milk of the word of God that you may grow thereby. Acts 20 verse 32 I commend you to God and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up the word the word the word the word the word gathering in worship growing in the word number three uphold them and train them in the discipline of prayers uphold them and train them in the discipline of prayers uphold them and train them pray for them and pray with them that's the meaning pray for them and then what pray with them till they practice prayer till they learn prayer pray for them then pray with them pray for them then pray with them pray for them then pray with them so you uphold them by praying for them and then you train them by praying with them uphold them and train them in the discipline of prayer acts 2 42 they continued in prayers they continued in prayers acts 4 23 they all lifted up their voice in one accord and prayed 23 and 24 they all lifted their voice in one accord and prayed everybody has to learn to pray galatians 4 19 i travel again in prayers till christ be formed in you I travel in prayers. I travel in birth till Christ be formed in you. You must pray for them and you must teach them to pray. You must pray for them and you must teach them to pray. That was number what? Number six? Number six. And number seven, show them continuous love. Show them continuous love. Care for their needs. Care for their needs. Encourage them in their needs. Find out what is their problem. Give what you can, but more importantly, encourage them. Show them love, continuous love. Love means care. Love means support. Love means assist where you can. Love means give where you can. But you must show care. You must show support. Show them continuous love. Acts 2.45. They minister to everyone as they had need. They minister to everyone as they had need. Acts 4 verse 35. They distributed to everyone what they had. So sometimes you don't have, but you can minister encouragement. Other times you have, so you give. But you must show love. You must do what? You must show love. You must show love. You must show love. You must show love. And lastly, number eight. Plant them in small groups and fellowships. Plant them in what? Small groups. And fellowships. If you want to see them established, plant them in small groups and fellowships. Small fellowship groups, upper room, department. Plant them, put them, get them in. Let them not be alone. 
in the large church they will, they will disappear people wouldn't know what they need but in small groups in house fellowships in house fellowships in the upper room so every one of us must take the upper room seriously every one of us if you have not been taking the upper room seriously repent and from today tell yourself lord i'm going to take the upper room seriously we must put them in small groups we must put them in small groups acts 2 46 acts 2 46 the bible says there in acts 2 46 and they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart and the lord added daily such as should be saved and they were enjoying favor the blessings began to explode the harvest began to explode miracles multiply prosperity multiply divine protection multiply wisdom multiply mature disciples multiply ministry and ministry gifts multiply when they did these eight things stand to your feet Hallelujah, 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 Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art. How great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God. To thee, how great thou art, how great thou No one ever cares for me like Jesus. There's no other friend so kind as he. No one ever could take my sins and darkness from me oh how much he cares for me rock of ages clear for me let me hide myself in thee for me let me hide myself in thee you are my shield you are my covering you are my stability my foundation you are my shield you are my covering. You are my stability. Hey, hey, hey. My foundation. Take me to the place. The place you are. The secret place. That's where I want to be. Lord, take me to the place. You are yes, the secret place that's 
where I want to be. Take my hand, take my hand, take my hand. Lord, lead me to the rock, the rock that is higher. Lord, lead me to the Lord. Take my hand. Yeah. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Say, Father, help me to be a true laborer for souls. May I not fail you. Pray that prayer now. Everybody pray. Everybody remember what you heard and pray. Remember the message and pray. Help me to be a true laborer. A true laborer for souls. They must be saved. They must be brought in. They must be saved. 
they must be added they must be saved they must be discipled help me to be a true laborer a true laborer not a hypocritical laborer not a deceitful laborer a genuine laborer a passionate laborer a true laborer a genuine laborer a passionate laborer choose me use me i will not fail you i will not fail you i will not fail you in jesus name and everybody says say with me father you promised that as i go after souls you will meet my needs as i do my part lord do your part pray that prayer now as i do my part do your part i will not cry i will not beg i will not beg what is mine must enter my hand what is mine must enter my hand my job my money my healing my marital settlement my fruitfulness my breakthrough my promotion what is mine must enter my hand i will not beg i will not beg i will win souls no man will stop me no power no altar no devil no witch as i do my part 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 in jesus name let your amen be louder than your neighbor's amen. let your amen be louder than your neighbor's amen. let your amen be the loudest in that section amen. receive your harvest in the name of jesus amen. amen receive that job in the name of jesus receive that financial breakthrough in the name of jesus receive that marital settlement in the name of jesus receive that open door in the name of jesus receive that family deliverance in the name of jesus receive that speed in the name of jesus everything you desire receive it now in the name of jesus wave your hands and worship the lord do you believe that god heard that word then wave your hands and worship him wave your hands and worship him wave and worship him hold the hand of somebody by your left by your right so hold some by your left and right say in the name of jesus this coming friday and onward radical soul winning the fire for radical soul winning rest upon us as a church rest upon us as individuals fire for radical soul winning to win and disciple souls fire rest upon us pray that prayer right now as individuals as a church as individuals as a church jesus did not die for nothing jesus did not die in vain fire for radical soul winning rest upon us rest upon us we will return with great harvest great harvest great harvest great harvest great harvest so shall it be in jesus mighty name and everybody says now i am so convinced that god is going to explode testimonies in people's lives i know it because we're going to be all out for soul winning beginning from today it shall be so in your own life in jesus name finally you're in this service and you need to give your life to jesus all eyes closed place your right hand on your chest you're in this service and you need to rededicate your life to jesus place your right hand on your chest place your right hand on your chest do it right now right there where you are there's nothing to be ashamed of you need to repent you need to rededicate your life you need to surrender your heart afresh to jesus place your hand on your chest right there pray after me and say lord jesus I repent now I surrender my life to you Jesus be my Lord and my Savior come into my heart give me eternal life I receive soul salvation I receive my sins forgiven I am saved Satan pack your load and go I don't belong to you anymore I belong to Jesus all the days of my life in Jesus name and everybody says amen quickly that hand on your chest all eyes still close lift it up in the air quick let me pray for you lift it up in the air let me pray for you that's all you can do you cannot bless yourself but you can lift the hand lift it let me pray for you please do it very well god is about to shock those who know you father behold these hands that are lifted i pray for them right now that the mark of the blood of jesus will be placed on their lives the mark of mercy the mark of grace the mark of favor from today all things have passed away and all things have become new. Satan, take your hands off their lives. They don't belong to you anymore. We serve you. Quick notice. You and your attacks and your bandages. Get out in the name of Jesus. 
and we receive these ones planted in the house of God. Saved and added. No going back. Welcome to the family of God. In Jesus' name, you with your hand up and everybody around them, shout amen. amen. Give the Lord a big, big clap offering. Hallelujah. All of you that lifted your hand, quickly, come and receive a handshake from me. Quick, come. Come and receive a handshake from me. I have a very big God, though. He's always by my side. A very big God. By my side. By my side. A, a very big God. He's always by my side. A very big God. God bless you. God bless you. Sit down here for one minute. God bless you. One minute. Come, come, come. A very big God. You have only one minute. I am a very big God. God bless you. He's always by my side. 